as I started doing more and more of this integrative approach, and I went from as a board certified UIN and surgeon, I went from doing two to three surgeries a week because that was my answer to really get the quickest healing for my patients. That's what I thought. But as I started working with my nutritional programs and the recommendations, lifestyle changes, I went from doing two to three a week to two to three a year because the body is so powerful. It has this tremendous capacity to heal itself. And that makes all the difference in the world. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Today, I am talking to a dear friend, Dr. Annika Becca, about a topic that we both love, and that is how to transition into menopause with ease and grace. Now, I'm excited to be having this conversation with her today because it is a much needed conversation. You know, menopause has been painted as a dirty word, and in some instances, it has been painted as a condition that needs to be treated. But it's neither of these things. Menopause is simply a natural transition that every woman experiences. And when our bodies are healthy and we're living a great lifestyle, menopause can be filled with ease and grace. Now, probably one of the biggest questions that I am asked most about my new book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, is women want to know if this book can help with menopause and postmenopause. And the simple answer is yes. When I surveyed thousands of women, at least 25% of them, I mean at least, were women over the age of 55 years old. And based on your biggest concerns and questions around your hormones, I created all of the content for the book. Now, in today's conversation, Dr. Anna is also going to be talking about her experience with menopause and how she's helped thousands of women. We are also going to be talking about her new book, which I know you are going to love. But before we jump into this amazing conversation with Dr. Anna on menopause, I want to just share a couple things with you. One, did you know that I began releasing two podcast episodes each week on Tuesdays and Fridays? And it started at the very beginning of the year, and the response, oh my goodness, has been amazing. Literally, this podcast is bringing on more amazing listeners like yourself every single day, and it's all because of you. You know, we spread great information through word of mouth, and I'll tell you what, this podcast is spreading, and it's all because we are having these conversations. So thank you so much for not only tuning in, but for sharing these episodes with someone in your life that could use a little wellness inspiration. Now, as you know, I created this podcast to give women more insight about their bodies and provide an explanation for why they aren't feeling like themselves, but are not exactly sure what is going on. Now, recently, I also surveyed another 9,000 plus women and asked them to prioritize their biggest health concerns. And the top three issues that came up over and over and over again were number one, the inability to lose stubborn weight. And I call that hormone-driven weight resistance and the unrelenting cravings that go along with it. Number two, feeling exhausted and overwhelmed practically every day. And a lot of women had experienced anxiety and worry. Number three was experiencing brain fog from oftentimes not enough sleep at night. Now, I have a feeling that you two have experienced one or two or maybe even many of these symptoms, but can't seem to figure out what's going on. And that is exactly why we're here. That is exactly why I created this podcast, to provide you with true answers. Now, as you know, I was in this exact situation myself several years ago. For many years in my late 20s, my body was trying to tell me something, and I did a horrible job at listening at first. And for years, I was experiencing migraines, painful periods, bloating, and I was chronically exhausted all the time. And as I started towards this journey towards healing, I began to realize that millions of women like myself were dealing with very similar issues and it was not their fault. Just like it's not your fault. Now I know how it feels to not have the answers and to feel dismissed or even be told that I was simply going to have to live with this. Like I, for one, accepted that answer. And I want you to know that nobody gets to rewrite your story for you. 
when it comes to your health. You get to rewrite that story. Now, as you guys know, my healing journey wasn't that easy, but it was absolutely worth it. And I learned so much that opened the doors to more research. Now, the culmination of all of this research over the last decade is in my newest book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, which is currently out in bookstores everywhere, unless it is sold out in the bookstores, which I have been hearing about, where they are finally restocking them again. Now, the book even got on the top 20 list of Amazon for several days. I cannot tell you how incredible that is. And I have been loving, I mean, loving every second of the day, seeing your pictures of the book or even seeing your selfies with the book or better yet, seeing your book next to your dogs cuddled in bed. It's probably my favorite thing ever. So please keep the images coming. And if you're loving the book, consider leaving a review on Amazon. Currently, there are over 140 five-star reviews for the book so far, and it's only been out for two short weeks. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, as a small token of my incredible appreciation for grabbing your copy, I have created the most epic bonus goodies as a big thank you. And all you got to do is go and grab that copy at your favorite online or local bookstore. And I'll tell you, the one place that people love to buy the book is either at the local bookstore or Amazon. Those seem like the two favorite places. Next, you're going to go to drmarisa.com slash hormone book. That is going to be my book bonus page. It's in my profile, in my Instagram. It is on my website. It's pretty much everywhere. And if you're wondering what my Instagram handle is, it's at Dr. Marisa. So that's D-R-M-A-R-I-Z-A. And then when you get to the book bonus page, you're just going to enter your details and the bonuses will be instantly delivered to your inbox in a matter of seconds. Now, if you're wondering what is in the book, Really, what the Essential Oils Hormone Solution offers is a step-by-step program to resetting your body through focused and deliberate changes through self-care, nutrition, and the power of essential oils. It is literally my hormone trifecta. But there are targeted recipes for all kinds of hormone-related symptoms like chronic fatigue, overwhelm, sleep, insomnia, weight challenges, women's hormones, perimenopause, menopause, libido, fertility, emotional well-being, but dealing with anxiety, depression, and mood swings, cognitive changes, digestion, detoxification. Oh my goodness. I could just go on and on and on. There's so many great solutions in this book. And you are going to get all of those plus the bonuses once you grab a copy and head over to my book bonus link, which will be in the show notes for this episode. Now, let's get on into this conversation with Dr. Anna Kabeka. But before we do, you know I love to sing their praises, so I am so excited to sing Dr. Anna's praises for you. Now, Dr. Anna is a medical doctor, mother, an advocate for women's health, a researcher, and an educator. She frequently lectures nationally and internationally regarding restorative health and women's health issues. She specializes in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, natural alternatives, successful menopause, and age management medicine. She is now focusing on educating women and men worldwide, including physicians and healthcare providers, on successful age management, balancing hormones, and women's health. She is the creator of multiple programs like Magic Menopause, and she has a podcast, which I was lucky to be on recently, called Couch Talk. It's all about addressing women's health and cutting health topics. And you can find her at Couch Talk or head on over to her website as well. Now, let's get this conversation started. Welcome, Dr. Anna Kabeka, to the Essentially You podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Maritza. It's great to be here with you. Well, today we are talking all things hormones. And most importantly, what I'm hoping to dive into is really just navigating menopause, what that looks like. Maybe when talking a little bit about kind of the perimenopause limbo, where women are not exactly sure what's going on with their bodies, what to expect, how to transition with grace and ease. 
But first, before we get into that, I would love to talk a little bit about your incredible journey. You know, you are one of the most incredible doctors, rather, in this space. And I I love your content. I love reading your blogs. I love hearing your authentic story when you share specifically about your hormone journey and how that's led into this mission of supporting women all over the world. So could you tell me a little or tell us a little bit about that journey and what led you here today? Yeah, I'm happy to share. Thank you. I have to tell you, it's been a um, a journey of professional and personal mayhem for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually diagnosed with premature menopause, early, you know, premature ovarian failure, early menopause when I was 38 years old, and we had gone through a very traumatic point in our lives, and it was certainly stress to the max. I had post traumatic stress and. My husband and I were trying to conceive a child and we were told, you know, it was that, you know, the only option would be egg donation for us at that point and which we decided not to do at that time of our lives. And it was just devastating to us. And I I kept thinking, like, how could this be irreversible? How could I go from regular periods to this early premature menopause, this irreversible infertility and all of this that we were diagnosed with, not to mention how I felt at this time, post-stress, chronic daily stress and and post-traumatic stress. And it was an investigation, a deep dive for me, one that actually took me around the world looking for answers. And that's how my journey started in my my, my personal aspects of my journey started in my late 30s. So I really went to the experts from traditional medicine and indigenous healers from around the world, from Native American shaman to Andean philosophers and healers and to some of the world's leading scientists in Australia and Europe. And I just kept looking for answers. And so what I did and learned, I incorporated into my life and my family's life. And lo and behold, I became pregnant and I conceived my daughter, Ava Marie, beautiful Ava Marie. And I delivered a healthy, beautiful baby at age 42 years old, a child I was not told, I was told I was never going to be able to have. So my miracle baby, you know, I think with the grace of God and the information that I was able to learn helped reverse my menopause, my premature ovarian failure, and helped me then opened my eyes to another world of medicine that I was able to apply into the lives of my patients as a gynecologist and obstetrician and integrative medicine doctor. Even at that time, I applied this new but found knowledge into creating products that I combined from ingredients that I used around the world and creating programs to help empower women to be their own healer, right? To be their own best physician. I will say 90% of it's in the patient's hand because I'm an egotistical doctor. I want to claim 10%. But really, unfortunately, many people think it's the other way around and we're too quick to give our power away. As I started doing more and more of this integrative approach, and I went from as a board certified UIN and surgeon, I went from doing two to three surgeries a week because that was my answer you know, to really get the quickest healing for my patients. That's what I thought. But as I started working with my nutritional programs and the recommendations, lifestyle changes, I went from doing two to three a week to two to three a year, because the body is so powerful, it has this tremendous capacity to heal itself. And that makes all the difference in the world. And so for me, that's been my personal journey, my professional passion to find these natural solutions and create them for women and put them in their own hands so they can wisely discern what works for them, what actually gets to the root cause and helps them move forward in a healthy, in a healthy direction on a healthy route. Wow. That is such a powerful story. I'm so glad that you shared that with us. One of the questions that came up for me when I was listening was when you were navigating through that time, figuring out what was going on with your hormones, what were some of the feelings that you were experiencing? And also, were there ever moments that you felt like you just weren't not not necessarily finding the answers, but I know so often when we're working with women, they they when they're navigating through this kind of this pathway of of hormone imbalance, they don't always know where to turn or how can we really begin to kind of claim that 90% of becoming the CEO of our own health in this journey? Because I feel like we struggle with being advocates for our health. 
Oh, we absolutely do. And that's a perfect question because often it's like, it's subtle, right? These changes are subtle. It may start in this transition, hormonal transition time period in our mid thirties. And we're starting to have some more PMS, irregular periods, maybe some uh, breakthrough bleeding, but the PMS is starting to irritate us. And You know, I always tell my clients, if you only hate your husband two weeks out of the month, it's probably your hormones, not your husband, most of the time anyway. But one of the things is that we start these symptoms going on and our standard of care will address that with, well, here's a prescription for Prozac. You can only, you may only take it during your luteal phase and, and just see if that helps the PMS. And then the client comes back in and says, I'm still having you know, still not feeling good, feeling irritable. And now, you know, I'm having more cramps with my cycle. And the physician or practitioner may say, okay, well, let's put you on a birth control pill. And that's the next reasonable step from our current medical system recommendations. And you're like, okay, well, that's going to suppress the ovarian, your natural body's hormonal response. It does that without ever addressing the reasons for these symptoms to begin with. And so then typically the patient will come back in and say, well, I'm still having symptoms. Now I have an ovarian cyst. Um, you know, my sex drive's really, you know, doused because of the SSRI. And you know, we're like, okay, well, we can do a hysterectomy, take care of this problem and take your ovaries out while we're there since you're over age 35. And then the client comes back in and says, oh, I'm still feeling irritable. I don't you know, like how I feel and really struggling with these symptoms because we never really address the underlying cause. And the next thing the you know, we're doing as physicians is writing a prescription for a writing a referral to psychiatry and divorce attorney, right? We've never addressed the underlying reasons from the beginning. When I started addressing those underlying reasons, so initially the estrogen dominance that we'll start to see, and we start to see it earlier because of the xenoestrogens, the hormone disruptors in our environment, in our, in our foods and water sources. So we have to be conscientious of that and continually detoxify our body. So when we start with that first step of detoxification, so our body can metabolize the hormones we're exposed to better and remove the things that are not necessary or in fact damaging, we get to a state of hormonal ease a lot earlier. And then sometimes we need additional bioidentical progesterone to help with this transition, this transition time period. And that makes all the difference. So when we're navigating, the first thing is I would say to, you know, self-care is paramount. Self-care is paramount. So it's also a lot of doing less than doing more, removing things that, you know, steer us in the wrong direction, affect our body negatively that don't resonate health with our body. And those three ways are where we start. Certainly the food, the nourishment we do, the lifestyle, and those first steps are key for anyone, you know, certainly over age 35, but especially experiencing these symptoms. Gosh, you touched upon so much there. But one of the things I heard too was that less is more. And I think for us as women, we when it comes to our health, when it comes to our hormone health, or when it comes to letting go of weight or whatever we, whatever it is, I feel like we just go into overdrive in those moments. And can you talk a little bit about why less is more for us so often? Because I know that was a lesson that took me way too long to learn in my, in my journey. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Because we have to do everything. And then we really love to do the things we're really good at. So for me, I'm really good at work. I'm really good at problem solving. Well, in that instance, there's a lot of problems to solve, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So you're like, okay, well, I am good at this. I get positive feedback for this, positive encouragement. But still, I have to do everything. And that can really be like, you, you know, that old juggling, right? All of a sudden, you're juggling 12 balls in the air. And I know you have and I have and so many people listening your show right now certainly can nod their head in agreement. And it's that sense that we have to do this all at one time. And really, it comes to this. And I actually had a friend over this morning, we were having coffee, and we were talking about these things. And I said, you know, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that has to be the first step in discernment. If it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And then my big mantra this week, because again, it's a constant discipline and a practice, is I need to do the things that are on the top of my list, not on the top of my pile. You know, and I feel like, oh, well, I've got to tackle my inbox. I've got to tackle these 
messages. I've got to do these five things going on all at the same time. And it's like, no, what is my priority? You know, God and family first. All right. Then what's my priority after? What do I have to do for these two things? And what do I have? What's my third thing? My passion and purpose in life and running my business. Right. And so what do I have to do there? What is the most important thing that's going to set me on the goal, the right path, keep me in direction alignment doesn't take me off course and focus on those one, two or three things maximum. And that has been a discipline and practice that is part of the routine. And, and I really jump back a second, Maritza, because I didn't say self care. And that part of, you know, would put that up here with God and family first is self care, because to stay in alignment to stay in spiritual attunement, we have to be centered. We do have to be centered. What does that connection look like? Because I do feel we do struggle there too, right? Finding that center, that practice can come along for other people. Are we looking at daily practice? Are there recommendations around there? And I recognize that when it comes to spirituality, it can really vary. But I think more so what I'm looking for is like, why is that connection so important? Oh, wow. I think that's that alignment. I think innately we know that we're part of a bigger picture, right? You're part of my life as far away in the world as you are right now, right? right? We're part of each other's lives. And then we're part of a bigger picture. So I think that's inherent to our energetic body, because our energetic body expands, science shows that it expands over 30 feet from our center, right? So we want to consider that, okay, we've got this expansive energetic body, we know, from a wife in one side of her house, is physically connected to her child or her husband on another side of the house by energetic. If we raise the other person's heart rate, her heart rate will start to raise. Opposite side of the house, scientifically measured, fascinating research. So we're connected beyond us. So it comes really important to be able to stay in the sense of clarity. And practice is proof in this instance. For me, you know, I've gone... I sat around the world seeking answer and studying from all different philosophies. But for me, practice is proof. I do, and I can, to share one of my practices with you, I do a St. Ignatian spiritual exercise each night. And I kind of trimmed it down to my version of it. And it's these three questions I ask myself. So where did I see love today? Where was I loving? And how could I have loved better? And where could I have laughed at myself more today? And so in these three discerning questions at the end of each day, this checklist, and then just the practice and my moving towards love or fear, that's kept me in spiritual alignment. And from an energetic standpoint, increases oxytocin, increases our overall immune response, increases our sense of well-being, inner peace and joy. I love that practice and I'm so grateful. And I was, I was really curious because I knew you had done this kind of this beautiful voyage and you have gone through a lot of this discovery with a lot of us haven't had a time. And I mean, maybe we're not making time to do it. And so I just wanted to connect back into that because that discovering that journey, Anna, that you've decided to go on to kind of connect, really create that connectivity. I believe that we are all inextricably connected. And the more and more we, we tap into that spirituality, I think we realize that we are connected. And one of the things that I also have found is that through your healing journey, you have been able to heal so many other people because ultimately there is this beautiful connection that we have. And so I just want to say thank you so much for sharing on that. Oh, you're very welcome. And I love what Chief Seattle said, you know, Seattle is named after him. So Chief Seattle had said, humankind has not woven the web of life. We are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together. You know, tremendous wisdom in that quote. And I just love it for that reason. It's exactly what you said, inextricably connected. Mm. I love bringing on those pieces of spirituality, recognizing the type of self-care we should be looking at. And what I want to do is I want to pivot into an area of transition for us as women that I feel a lot of women are just, there's a lot of confusion around it, more so like what to expect. And that is kind of that transition from perimenopause to menopause. Could you talk a little bit about what is actually happening? Because I think we know the language, like we know the words and we know the symptoms. But we're not exactly sure what is happening with our body, what is normal to be happening? I feel like sometimes these words are deemed, this language is deemed 
in a negative connotation because with the lifestyle that we're living and the way that we're operating, it definitely can feel like a crazy roller coaster. So could you speak to that a little bit and give it some more context around the grace and the beauty of this transition for us? Oh, yeah, certainly. Because what's normal doesn't necessarily feel good. No, it doesn't. Like like exhaustion is not normal, right? Even though it's painted to be that way for women. <laughs> right. Or aches and pains. I mean, getting out of bed and having your feet hurt when they touch the ground, bending over and that hurting, having stiffness in your fingers and swelling in your ankles. While these are physical signs that something under there's something we have to address underneath as part of the root cause to these things and the symptoms that many women struggle with the the hot flashes the night sweats the sleeplessness and being sleepy all the time the brain fog and memory loss there's a component to these symptoms this negative aspect of what's going on that's our body's cry for a rebalance Thing of restructuring at the cellular level. We got to improve cell to cell communication, just like in a household, right? It's not a fun dinner table when everyone's angry at each other, but it's super fun when we're all having fun together and encouraging each other and loving each other. And so that's what we have to do from the cellular level. <laughs> and I love this stuff because this you know, gets the science and the practical. And again, where can we laugh at ourselves? So the hot flash, and I've experienced that tremendous combustion of hot flash. And I knew that my hormones, my estrogen, progesterone, those hormones, I've been really well managing. So it was a deeper issue. It was cortisol and insulin. And so now we know really there's great research supporting the fact that insulin resistance is causing incessant hot flashes, why some women in their 70s are still having hot flashes. So that's one aspect, this, you know, the hormonal changes that are happening, progesterone decline first, estrogen swing, DHEA declining from our mid 20s, and then testosterone with a slow decline. So we know this reproductive hormonal loss, but there's more to our hormonal picture than that. There's the major players and, and one in particular insulin, which is causing the increase in the obesity, the weight gain the brain fog, the hot flashes, the inflammation, it's a big contributor there. And so that's why, you know, my programs with Keto Green Lifestyle using ketosis with an alkaline based diet can make, you know, a lot of greens, low carbohydrate greens in your diet can really make a big difference in, in helping to heal that too. So there's, then we get into the stage that I've walked many women to many women through my my magic menopause program, we go through this stage of rebalancing our hormones. And so we go from not wanting to do our usual activities to really like, oh my gosh, you know, I've, I've wanted to fly a plane for 35 years. A flight attendant told me this. And as she got her hormones balanced, her major hormones and, and her minor hormones, as she got them balanced, she started taking fi- flying lessons at age 67. I mean, I love that. I love hearing those stories. And another woman, just adorable. And she has a farmhouse in the Midwest and was just going from work to home, had this beautiful farm with her horses and livestock and pets. And she was never going outside, never enjoying it. She had no more energy to do that. And so getting these hormones balanced, getting these markers under control made such a huge difference in her life. She was out horseback riding again. She was out playing. She had the energy and she she knew as soon as she didn't feel like going outside again, that she had to up level her program, get back on. She'd fallen off. So our physiology drives our behavior. And it's so important for women to understand that because we start to blame ourselves. When we burst out in anger at our mate or our children, we have to think, okay, something's wrong with my physiology because I know I'm not acting how I want to act, right? And so there's a physiologic reason for that. And that is so empowering, I believe, and can just take the guilt and grief off of our shoulders when we realize that. Mm, I absolutely agree. And then it's really about that guilt, that guilt and the shame that we experience during these times. Have you found too that that does play a role where women just don't feel like they are deserving or that they are worthwhile, that they get to spend that time with themselves to get their body back on track? Gosh, you know, it breaks my heart. I'll tell you, it just brought to mind several clinics 
patients that I had. And when I would ask them, have them do something called a positivity self-assessment questionnaire, it was just like, how would you answer on a scale from zero to three, these seven questions? And, and a couple of them were like, I, I love my body. I am happy. I am content. I feel energized. I am productive. So when I would see zeros all down the line, it's just that that negative self speak that you're talking about that, like we have a bigger issue to work with here. But part of that negative is that negative energy. It's it's the physiology, the unhealthy cells that aren't communicating well. It's sitting at the dinner table with a angry, you know, everyone's angry at each other. And there's that negativity, that negative energy around you. And that can be at the cellular level when we have inflammation, when we have hormone imbalance, when we have insulin resistance, when we have high levels of stress and cortisol, when we're in a toxic laden environment, that's going to create the emotional that, you know, a a component of the emotional. So it goes both ways. We have to reframe our thoughts in the positive direction and in self-love. So I tell clients when they're dealing with that, that how would you talk to your daughter about this? How would you talk to your best friend's daughter if she was feeling the way you're feeling right now? What would you say to her? And without a doubt, they would lift them up elevate them, encourage them, find the beauty and gifts. And so to look in the mirror and to look at yourself as that child, you know, as that young girl and start talking to yourself as your positive influencer, as your best mentor, to shift that self-talk to really what is in alignment with our soul image And I always say my soul image takes precedence over my self image, my body image and my other's image. (laughs) So for me, so for me, that's the image of God in me, the Holy Spirit in me. Well, the Holy Spirit's always awesome, right? So that can't be separated from me. And so that helps me with this positive self speak because I've been down that self destructive path. You know, I've just loved everything that you've said, mainly because I feel like, you know, it's it's so beautiful to connect with a woman who has really done the work, right? Who is really connected in. And like you said, really finding th- that connection that, that really matters, letting go of the self-image, letting go of the negative talk, because that permeates through our cells. It permeates through our cellular communication. And I think that that all plays a big role as well. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit because this is some these are some big this big work that we could be doing and this is all so important and what i'm understanding too is that this work really needs to be done for us to fully step into our health and well-being but are there some little tricks are there some little things that we can begin to implement immediately if if knowing that this is kind of the longer the longer journey ahead what can we do to kind of have those I always love to experience some of those little wins throughout the big journey. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's really little steps that make a whole big difference. Like for me in, in my life, I, I start the day with an alkaline green drink. So I created a product called Mighty Maca Plus, which has maca from Peru, from the high altitudes of the Andes, and over 30 other amazing superfoods like turmeric, carcetin, resveratrol, milk thistle, I mean, just, you know, mangosteen is so many good things that just help support the body from many different directions. So for me, that's key. I start that with actually a swig of apple cider vinegar, some warm water with some lemon juice. And I'll do that while I do my devotional or gratitude journaling in the morning. So that starts my path off that practice is a better practice for me than grabbing my cup of coffee, bulletproof or not, right? And starting my day, you know, rushing and harried. So I start for starting the practice off with gratitude, with setting your mind. I do some spiritual readings at that part, even if it's five or 10 minutes, first thing in the morning, setting my mind and my intentions for my day, alkalinizing my body, nourishing it with good, good food, good, healthy choices. That starts my day off well. And then I'm more empowered to continue to make the next right step one after another all throughout the day. It's not flawless, but it's a start. So I think as women, recognizing that we need more alkalinity because the more acidifying 
stress, lifestyle choices, foods in our diet that really affects our overall health and mental well-being. We know that um, acidic urine, I, I, I created urine test strips to measure urinary pH and ketones. And so anyone can just go to a health food store and get pH paper and just check to see, just a great check for you on a daily basis is to start getting your urine alkaline. And that will give you a better start for the day in your life because we know alkaline urine is associated with less osteoporosis, less heart disease, less hypertension, less obesity, all those really important things we want to avoid. And that's just a measure of starting your day, getting alkaline, adding more greens into your diet can make a huge difference in balancing your hormones, really starts healthy cell-to-cell communication. So I would say that's the first thing. One of the things you said, not only just really nourishing and fueling your body, creating an environment that's really healthy, but also that we, if when we, if we start our day making healthy choices, that we, we will continue. Well, ideally we're, con- we're continuing to keep that, um, to keep that momentum that we're, we're going to make more healthy choices on top of that. So I 100% agree that a morning ritual that's really nourishing your body and really focusing on you before other priorities, other people's priorities and demands is the best way to get started. So I love, I was like, oh my goodness, her morning routine is my morning routine. I just yes. love it. <laughs> and one one of the other things um, I wanted to just mention as we're, we're finishing up, Dr. Anna, that you just kind of shed light on is, you know, that nourishing part and how important it is to be really mindful about nourishing. And so I'm so grateful that you took the moment and really explained that as well. Now, I don't know if you had planned something. I don't, for some reason, have it in my notes, but is there a little gift that you would love to to give us? Unfortunately, I don't have it in my notes, which I normally do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have a gift page and I want to give, we didn't get a chance to talk to, but another one of the solutions I talk about, but one of the solutions that I created for women, especially in the perimenopause, menopause is my Jolva cream, which you can always combine a little uh, beautiful essential oil with, but Jolva cream is a combination of emu oil, coconut oil, shea butter, plant stem cells from the alpine rose, which are incredible, really help with resilience of skin and DHEA and use it, you know, for their vulvar area for our feminine lady bits to help keep that healthy vaginal moisture, improve pleasure. And it's a great thing. So we have, we're going to give your audience that Uh, we have a free gift page. Yeah. So we'll have the link in the show notes. And let me tell you, not only do I love that product, but my mama loves that product. Oh my goodness. We were just talking. I heard. That's awesome. (laughs) She (laughs) loves it. When I told her about it, because I had given it to her for Christmas, she was like, what is this? She was so excited. And I'll be honest with you. She doesn't really have any issues in that department necessarily, but she doesn't mind having a little extra, extra, you know, a little extra boost. And so I just want to say how remarkable that product is. And I just want to also say thank you so much for creating it because there was such a need for it. And so I'm grateful that this is a gift. I can't wait to share it in the show notes. And is there any last inspiration, Dr. Anna, that you can share with us? Although I will say that you have given us a lot of inspiration today. Well, thank you. Thank you. I would just say, you know, we never give up hope and we're never too old. Really to keep keep looking at what our potential is. What's the next thing you want to do and go for it. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming in and sharing your beautiful wisdom. And I look forward to connecting with you super soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Talk about dispelling myths around menopause. I just love Dr. Anna's take on how to heal hormones naturally. She and I are very much in alignment, and I am so grateful that she has been such a big support of my book, and I am such a massive fan of her new book coming out today. Now, our books go so beautifully together, and you can go grab Dr. Anna's book, The Hormone Fix, at any major bookstores, and it'll be online as well as long and in my show notes. So it'll be there. Go and grab the copy. I know you're not going to regret it. And Dr. Anna also has another wonderful gift for us as well, which is her seven day trial for her amazing Jolver cream. So if you are dealing with low libido or you are dealing with vaginal dryness, this is going to be a product that you are want to get your hands on. And you can grab a free trial, like seven nights free trial of Jolva for free. All you got to do is go to the show notes and grab that link as well. 
Well, thank you so much for stopping by and listening in to the Essentially You podcast. You know, it is such a pleasure to get to connect with you every single week. Well, actually twice a week. And this next episode coming up is going to be no different. You know, I have one of my dear friends coming on very soon in just a couple of days. I know you are going to love it as much as I do because she has got so much good stuff to share. It's going to be Dr. Marisol, and we're going to be talking about what your gut is telling you and how to fix it. This is going to be a great conversation because, you know, your gut is so connected with everything else that you do in the body, and she is going to lay it out for us. So until then, I look forward to connecting with you either on social media, and I can't wait to see you on the next episode. 